Rockler's click and carve CNC carving machine is relatively small in size, but powerful in what it'll do. And this machine comes at a price that makes it attractive to many home-based woodworkers. Along with the machine, you get a high-quality USB cable for connecting it to your computer. Along with bits and material samples to get you going, they include this game-style controller that makes this a very easy unit to operate. And you get easy-to-use software for controlling the machine. The clicking carve has this full-width shield that contains the dust that it creates. And while this doesn't throw a lot of dust around, you do have to have the shield closed for it to operate, and that's just a good safety feature. This side of the back panel has the on-off switch, the power cord receptacle, and a fuse. And the USB port is also on the rear panel. And to make cleaning the machine easier, they have the slide-out panel that gives you access to the rear of the cavity. I really like that they include a couple of bits, sample material, and special instructions that walk you through the first few pieces so you learn how to use the machine right. To connect a clicking carve to your computer, you just plug the USB cord into one of your USB ports, and the controller also plugs into a USB port. Aside from installing the software, that's the only connections you make to your computer. The first of the two software pieces included is the edit program. This lets you select the image that you want to carve and assign a width to it. This program maintains the original height and width proportions, so you want to make sure you do that right when you make the image in the first place. And you also select whether the tool will be cutting front to back or side to side. And this is mainly for wood because we want the bit to be cutting across the grain, not parallel with it. We also use this program for telling the machine what cutter is being used. And we can also specify the maximum depth that our carving will be at. The other factors here are described in the instructions, and once you do it once or twice, these are very easy to understand. The special sample pieces and those instructions walk you through this so you get a good understanding of what these are all about. This program also lets you see a 3D representation of the cut that's going to be made. And you can tilt that drawing to get a better look at it. And when you're satisfied with the image, this program also writes the code that drives the router. And you save this file to the hard drive. Despite the huge amount of information within these code files, they're relatively small on the hard drive. The other program is what uses that file to actually control the CNC machine. So the first thing we have to do is load that file that we just created in the other program. And you'll see in the process window how it's loading all those lines of code. We actually can do all of the settings right in that program using the mouse, but it's more fun with the game controller. After installing the cutter, we want to position it over the material where the carving is going to begin. With the bit at the right spot, we can lower it till it's near the surface of the material. And here you can slow the controls down to every time you hit a button, it only moves this cutter a thousandth of an inch up or down. And that makes getting it within a paper's thickness of the wood a very easy thing to do. And then we can close the cover to get the clicking carve ready for cutting. And then we have to go back to the program to make the final settings there. Since we have the cutter at its starting point, we go through and zero out all the coordinates. We also have to set the spindle speed and the feed rate according to the parameters in the manual, and then we can tell it to go ahead and start cutting. Notice how slow the material's moving? That's because I forgot something. This really was my first time running the click and carve, and I forgot to set the feed rate. Manual says for wood like this I can run it about 50%, so that's where we'll set it. This is a bit later in a carving, but it's still running at 50% of the feed rate. And you can see that the tool's moving up and down as the board moves front to back. Every one of those movements is another line of that code that we wrote earlier. This screen in the cutting program shows you where the tool is and what it's doing at the moment. I actually made a second one of these carvings, and now we're going to vacuum out the dust and see what we did. These really are the first and second carvings I made with this machine. Not too shabby. The clicking carve works off of images, and it doesn't care if those are images of letters or leaves or whatever. They also include this support board and a silicone mat that goes on that board. 
We need to use these when working with the acrylic sheets of plastic for making litho panes. First we stick the silicone mat to the work support that's provided. And then we set the acrylic sheet on the silicone and that holds it for the engraving. And yes, that silicone mat gets all full of the dust, but that just washes off with water. Here I'm following the setup instructions for the wolf image that they give you with this outfit. The instructions for these samples walk you through all of the settings so you get used to what they are and what they do. Aligning the tool and entering the parameters for this particular cut are all done exactly the same way. See here I have the tool moving right to left because with plastic that doesn't matter. And you can see that the feed rate is a little faster and that's allowed with plastic because of the shallow depth that we're cutting to. And here's the finished wolf cut and you can see the other problem I had is I didn't center this right when I set it up the first time. And this is what it looks like with some light behind it. The amount of detail this machine gets by just varying the depth of the cut is amazing. And this is my first attempt at something I want to cut out. I cut this to about a quarter of an inch deep. And now I'm going to put some masking tape over the front to hold this piece in place when I cut it free. And then with the bandsaw set to cut just under the quarter of an inch, I sliced that face off. And with no trimming or anything, this is how it came out. With just a little bit of sanding around the edges, this is going to be just fine. Imagine being able to cut just about any kind of shape you can think of like this, slice it out, and then glue it to your projects as an accent piece. This is a leaf I tried a little bit later, and that turned out just as well. Again, no sanding or trimming yet. So if you've been thinking that a CNC router system has been out of the question for your shop, you might want to rethink that. And you might want to rethink what you can do with one of these outfits. Mm -hmm.